Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be practically testing and exploring all the features of DeepSeek's latest model, DeepSeek version 3. And this is an exciting free and open source Chinese model that is really pushing the boundaries of AI. It's three times faster than their version 2 model. And if we look at the benchmarks, we can see it excels in reasoning related tasks with a score of 91.6% showing its ability to handle complex reasoning and comprehension. And it actually scores higher than any of the other models, including 3.5 Sonnet and ChatGPT 4.0. Other notable results on the benchmark, we can see that it's quite strong in coding with 82.6%, again, overtaking other models such as Arma 3.1, Claude 3.5, and ChatGPT 4.0. And we can also see that it performs exceptionally well in the maths benchmarks as well. For example, it gets 90.2% accuracy on maths 500. You can get one of the top performing models in this area. So let's explore the new features that come with DeepSeek version 3, this completely free AI model, to really see whether it's stands up to the benchmark results. So let's get started. So in order to get started, you need to go to DeepSeek's official website, which is deepseek.com. You'll see some news here about the new model, which indicates that it's completely free to access DeepSeek version 3. So we're going to click here on start now, and you'll see that it takes you to the page where you can sign in with your email or log in with Google. And once you do that, it'll ask you to click on the smallest blue triangular prism in the picture. So we're just going to do that. So once you've logged in, you can see this is DeepSeek's user interface, and it's quite simple and straightforward. And it's quite simple similar to many of the other AI models that we've used. So you'll see here that here's the main area where you can add your prompt. And on the left hand side, you'll find the menu with the different chats and conversations that you've had on DeepSeek. And then what you'll see here is that there's a button here that's called DeepThink. And once you activate that, it will help you to solve complex reasoning problems, similar to what you get with ChatGPT's O1 model. And it shows you the thinking process that it goes through. So this is a useful one to activate when you want to see the thinking behind the AI model's output and if you want it to use its reasoning abilities. And also what you'll find here is that it's got a web search feature which allows the model to search the internet for information and find updated information and sources to your questions. You also have the capacity to upload documents. It says here you can upload a maximum of 50 documents, 100 megabytes each. And as we'll see, that's not always entirely the case. It accepts a lot less than it states here, but we will look at that through our complete testing. But let's get started with our first prompt. Okay, so for the first prompt, I'm going to be testing its reasoning abilities. And as we saw in the benchmark, it's supposed to be one of the best performing models in terms of its reasoning abilities. And because I want it to use its reasoning abilities for this prompt, I'm going to activate this deep think button. The first prompt I'm going to use is the one I used when I was testing the previous Gemini model. And Gemini actually got that wrong. So I'm going to see whether DeepSeek is able to get the correct solution for this. So the question says, I have three brothers. Each of my brothers has two brothers. My sister also has three brothers. How many sisters and brothers are there? And as we can see, because we've activated the deep think, it's now thinking, and it's telling us the steps that it's going through in order to answer the question. So for example, it says, all right, so I've got this problem here. It says I have three brothers. Each of the brothers has two brothers. My sister also has three brothers. How many sisters are there? So it takes the question first. And it says, first, I need to understand who's speaking. And that is actually the essential part of the whole problem, that once you understand who is speaking and who the I person is, you can actually come to the solution of the problem. And it says it seems like the speaker is a person who has a brother and a sister. Let's assume the speaker is a boy. Okay, I'm not sure yet. So it's going through its thinking abilities. And then it takes us through step by step of the problem. And then it identifies that the speaker is actually a girl and then it goes on to break this down step by step and then once it's done that it comes with the conclusion which is three brothers and two sisters in total so it's actually performed really well with the initial reasoning uh, capacity and it's actually come back with the correct answer okay, and for the next prompt i want to test the model's ability to generate functional and interactive web-based content and specifically i want to evaluate whether it can create a quiz interactive quiz with multiple choice questions which allows me to submit my results at the end of that quiz. And for best practices, it's always good to start a new chat when you're adding a new uh, prompt. And because I don't really need its reasoning abilities um, for this prompt, I'm just going to deactivate that. And I'm just going to add a prompt here that says, create an HTML quiz with multiple choice questions, use custom style checkboxes for the answer options, and include a submit button that calculates and displays the user's score, ensure the design is clean. And I'm also going to provide it with the content that I want it to use in order to generate this quiz. So I've just said, use the following content, and then I've entered that. In order for me to be able to open this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to where it says copy, and I'm going to copy the code. And then because I'm using a Mac, I'm just going to go to my text editor. 
in order for me to paste that code. And you can use Notepad on PC. So I'm just going to come here and open a new document. And then I'm going to paste my code here. So I'm going to save this as quiz. And once I've done that, I'm just going to come here to where it says quiz. And I'm going to come to rename. And I'm going to add here dot html and what you'll see is once i've done that it says are you sure you want to change the extension from dot rtf to html i'm going to say yes use html and then once i've changed that i'm going to come here to where it says quiz dot html i'm going to open up my quiz and you can see that it's generated a nice looking quiz and i've got the option to select the correct response so i'm just going to come here i'm going to select some responses and then once I've done that, you can see I have the option as well to submit my quiz. So I'm going to submit and it says you scored two out of five. It displays the score. So a very nice way to um, create an interactive quiz using code from DeepSeek. For this third prompt, I'm going to test the model's ability to give me code to visually represent some workflows and processes. I'm going to add a prompt here that says, says give me a simple flowchart in SVG format that outlines the basic steps of the research process. The flowchart includes the following steps, and I've added the steps of the research process, and I'm going to enter that. Okay, and once I have the code that has been generated, I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to go to Google to this SVG viewer, and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to just delete the code that already exists and add the new code that I've generated from DeepThink. And what you'll see is that now I have a very nice looking flowchart, define research questions, conduct digital review, all the six steps that I included in my process. And what you can see is that I have an option to download this as a ping file. So I'm going to select ping and then I'm going to come here to where it says download the ping file. And then I can then open it up. And then you can see I've got a really nice image that I can use in my presentations and in my research projects. For our next prompt, I'm going to test its web searching capabilities. So I'm going to activate the search button down here. And I'm going to add this prompt, which asks it to search for the current stock value of Apple. And you can see here that it's found 41 different results. And it tells me as of December 31st, 2024, closing stock price of Apple was 250.42. And you can see here that it's added where it's extracted the information from. So if I click on this one, you'll see it takes me to the stock analysis page and you can see that the closing price is 250.42. You can see that this is as of December 31st. So just for context, today is the 1st of January. So if I go back here, it's extracted another web page here. It's 250.42 and this is results from January. And we can see Apple stock has shown significant growth over the past year. It's given me actually the increase over 2024 and the all time high, which was achieved on December 26th, 2024. And if I look at that, it takes me to macrotrends.net. And then actually it has that same information here. So actually really good web capabilities. It's able to retrieve almost real time information from the online sources. And what we'll see is that if I click here on where it says found 41 results, what it will do is we'll bring all the search results that it has used to come up with the response here on the side panel. So I know exactly where it's getting the sources from. It reminds us a bit of how complexity displays its results. And I can just click on the different sources and I can check that the information is valid and accurate. Okay, so for our next prompt, I want to assess its writing capabilities and looking at the tone in which it writes as well as the word count. So I'm just going to start off here by adding a prompt that says write 500 words on the role of AI in enhancing healthcare delivery. I'm going to leave the search on just to make sure that it extracts information from the latest sources. Okay, so we can see that the responses come back. And if we go through it, we can see that the writing is actually quite good. So this is artificial intelligence is revolutionizing healthcare delivery by enhancing efficiency, accuracy, and accessibility across various aspects of the industry. And then it tells us the different uh, parts of AI and healthcare that it's transforming and so on. And because my prompt has been quite generic, I didn't indicate whether this was academic writing or blog writing. It's just returned the information in paragraphs, but the content is actually quite good. So if we look at the word count for this, I'm gonna select the output. And once I've got that, I'm going to go to my word counter and I'm going to add that here. And if we look at the words, about 518 words. So it's been quite accurate in following the instructions. So the next kind of writing I want to test it with is how it does with creative writing. So I'm just going to add the usual prompt that I add here, which says write a creative story on a boy who gets lost in space. So I've been through the content that it's come back with. And what I can say is the writing is quite basic. So if you notice here, it starts off with once upon a time in a small, quiet town. And I wouldn't say that it's anywhere near the level that you'd get with Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which usually does quite well in these tasks and not 
even at the level of chat GPT for, I would say it would require quite a bit of prompting. So this definitely wouldn't be the choice of AI model I'd go for if I was looking for creative writing suggestions. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is how it does with uploading and summarizing documents. So this is important to really test with different AI models because then it can demonstrate its efficiency in extracting complex content. Start off by uploading the first 10 articles. So what you'll see is that it's not able to process all these 10 files, even though it said it can take up to 50 files and it says it can only read 62% of the files. So try replacing them with smaller excerpts. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to delete the last four files and what you'll see now that it will be able to process them. So I'm just going to add here a prompt that says, summarize these articles and provide the key insights. So first thing to notice here, again, even though it said it can take most of the articles, it said length limit reached, and then it can only read the first 97%. So I know that it wasn't able to read the last part of my article. And if I look at the information, I'd say it hasn't been very consistent. So in the first one, for example, it just gives me a general overview. Artificial intelligence is transforming healthcare by enhancing diagnostics, for example. It talks about the applications, the challenges. It's done a better job with the second one. It reviews the impact of things and AI in healthcare. And it gives you some key areas of its application, the challenges. Again, the insights are not very detailed. So I'd probably have to prompt it a lot more to extract richer information from this. So in terms of its summarizing abilities and extracting key information, I wouldn't say that this is the best AI model out there. And I think you'd get much better output from Claude 3.5 Sonnet and ChatGPT 4.0. Next prompt, I'm going to upload an image here. So I'm going to see whether it's able to describe the details in this image. So I've got a picture of a heart here and I've just uploaded it. And I'm just going to enter that. And it tells me the content appears to be a list of anatomical terms related to the heart and its surrounding structures. Here's a brief explanation of each term. If we quickly look at the image, you'll see that this is a picture of the human heart and it's got these different areas and it's given me a description of this. And what I want to show you here is that if I add an image of a heart that has no text on it, what it's going to come back with is saying no text extracted. And if I try and write describe this image, it fails to submit and it doesn't go through. So what you'll see is that although it's able to extract text from images and describe what's happening in a table, it doesn't yet have the multimodal capabilities that allow it to just read the images. And I think this is a bit of a shortcoming in DeepSeek because as we've seen with the latest models, most of them now have the capacity to extract information from images. So this would be something that we would look forward to DeepSeek developing. So I hope you found this test of DeepSeek useful and it's definitely one to watch out for over the next few months to see its progress and its development and it's definitely one that I'm starting to use a lot more so I hope you found this useful and I hope to see you in the next video